So the next chat is going to be with Paul Bergil. And for those of you who don't know, Paul is an amazing guy. He's a friend of ours. He's also a little bit crazy on a good side. Uh, he's tried to participate in the Olympics, uh, came very close, but unfortunately fell sick at the last week or so. Uh, he's done a lot of things. He goes to different countries, meets presidents all the time. I don't know why. Uh, I guess we'll have to find out. But Paul, come on, on, come on up here. So Paul. Thank you for coming, first of all. We're My pleasure. Very happy to have you here. You're a very busy guy, you know. You travel a lot, all the time. I know we, you just came from another conference. Was it in Kenya or...? Yeah, I was just in Tanzania and Kenya, Tanzania. just doing some stuff down there. Yes, correct. So, I mean, as I said, Paul, you're a bit of a crazy guy, right? And it, as I said, in a good way. How did that happen? I don't think I'm crazy. Actually, I think I'm doing just really interesting stuff, right? I mean, at the end of the day, all I'm doing is pursuing my dreams, right? I'm pursuing things I find are interesting. And well, if the people think that's crazy, then actually that's their fault. For me, it's just intriguing and I'm constantly learning. So yeah, I guess I'm crazy because I'm learning. I don't know, I think that's the easiest way of saying it. Cool, but uh, how did you kind of start to you know, pursue those things, different things? You became an entrepreneur. You were like, hey, I want to be at the Olympics. How do you get those ideas? I mean, so it's pretty simple. I like to daydream a lot, right? And yeah, I'll sit in my room and there's actually a lot of value in doing nothing. People always feel the need to be super busy, to always be doing something you want. The best ideas actually happen when you're just kind of going out there and you have no agenda, right? That's just one of the reasons I love traveling, right? I end up in a new place, I'm aimlessly walking around a city, and then you see patterns, you see new things, and that's actually where these ideas come from, right? So I think it actually just allowing yourself to kind of be in the middle of stuff and kind of absorb stuff, that's actually where really interesting ideas come from. And actually that's where a lot of really awesome company ideas come from as well too. So I think just by kind of being in the moment and not trying to always you know, be busy and trying to figure stuff out, actually allows you to kind of come up with creative ideas. Were you born this way? Um, no, I mean, I mean, I was always a dreamer, yes, and um, I was like pursuing stuff, but no, as a kid, I was really shy, I was very nerdy, and it took for a while for me to kind of come out of my shell, but as I kind of slowly got more and more feedback, I started pursuing more and more things, I saw that, hey, anything's possible, so one step leads to another. I mean, for me, I started out wanting to make video games, right? That was my dream, and then I made that happen. I'm like, well, shit, I accomplished that one. What other dreams should I make happen, right? And they just keep on adding up, and as you get closer, you accomplish more and more, then you realize that anything really is possible, so yeah. So, which dreams have you achieved so far? You, you know, you went into gaming. What else have you done that you that think that you achieved in your life? So, what other dreams have I pulled off? I mean, yeah. So, I I've gotten to the point where now I'm like, you know, financially independent. I don't have to necessarily work ever again. That's pretty awesome, right? Um, I'm also now. I mean, like for me, I've always wanted to travel, right? So, I mean, I've been to a bunch of company countries, right? I still haven't hit a lot, but I think I've been to a lot of places I really dreamed of How being to. How many countries? Um, I'm at 81 right now, but it's still like, I want to go 192, right? So I got to keep on going further and further. So like, I'd say there's a lot of dreams that still have to be accomplished, right? I mean, hell, I want to go out there and own a football team. I got to do that. I want to go out there and do other crazy stuff, right? So like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to stop, right? I don't think actually the best people I meet in the world, they're always pushing the limits. So that's kind of how it is. So what's the weirdest thing you've ever done? The weirdest thing I've ever done? Um... I think the coolest thing that, in my opinion, that doesn't really get much attention is, um, so about three years ago, the country of South Sudan actually became a brand new country, and I was obsessed with being in a country at the day of its creation, right? So I pretty much showed up there and crashed the presidential party, and up there and actually met the president of the new country, and they didn't know who he was, and actually was sitting at a table with Colin Powell. I had no fuck idea how I got there, but I think that's probably one of the more crazy things that does. A lot more detail behind that, but that's probably the more odd one I've done before, yeah. Cool. And I mean, you said you've been to a lot of countries, yeah. but looking at those 81, I mean, I don't know all the ones you've been to, but it looks like a lot of them are quite weird. You know, they're small, they're far away, you know, Estonia, Finland, you know, how do you end up here or there? Well, Finland's very easy, actually. I've known a bunch of people in the Finnish kind of tech scene since I was 15 years old. We kind of all come from this collective scene called the demo scene. Then a lot of us actually went into the game industry. So there actually is a very logical process, right? Estonia's next door neighbor, right? But in general for me, like I was saying a little bit earlier, kind of like when you're going out there and kind of in the moment, I love 
when the world's at, at its fringes, right? Actually, that's where all good opportunities are. Not necessarily in the countries itself, but like the best businesses in the world happen at the fringes, right? So like, let's say the world's like a, play, uh, a big sandbox, right? If you're in the middle of the sandbox, all you see is sand around you, right? But the world becomes really interesting when you start going on the edges. You climb to the top of the sandbox. You look out there. You look around there. That's where cool things happen. That's where you kind of get energized. You get really new you know, ideas and stuff like that. So for me... Yeah, I go to these places. I'm, I'm seeking the edges of the world. I'm like, like I said, the world for me is like one big video game, and I'm trying to figure out the limits of the engine of sorts. Like, hey, if I push this button, what comes out that other end and stuff like that? So, yeah. And, of course, exploration achievements. Yeah, I mean, of course. You power up. You meet this person, boop, power up, whatever, right? But, yeah, I mean, in some ways, it's kind of like that, yeah. Cool. So, I mean, you invest into startups. You work in the startup life. Uh, what is the coolest and then the weirdest startup you've ever invested in? Um, so, the weirdest company I'm involved in right now, it's kind of based out of my Singapore fund, is uh, it's a remote-controlled dildo vibrator, right? So All right, I think that's, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty probably, good. That's probably the weirdest one. Um, I mean, so the most popular one is, uh, I mean, a company called Uber. So, I'm involved in that company. I've known the founder forever. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, and it ranges the spectrum. I mean, I'm in a company, that, you know, through one of my friends here, he got involved, like, it optimizes milk production. I'm in companies that do really weird game stuff. I mean, so, like, yeah, I, I touch anything where I find entrepreneurs really excited, and usually when it's kind of on the edge, like, I don't want to see another B2B play. I don't want to see another kind of, like, boring, you know, consumer app. I want to see stuff that's, like, touching different worlds. Like, actually, the most interesting companies, actually, when somebody has expertise in two worlds, like, hey, they're technologists, but they also have knowledge in some other world. If you could combine those two, Actually, that's when really cool stuff happens. So, I mean, I agree with you completely. You know, writing about startups all the time, you get a lot that are very similar, quite repetitive. And we are always super excited at Arctic Startup when we see a company that's very in innovative, as you say, on the brink between two things usually. So how do the, what's your advice to the people sitting in this audience on how to come up with those ideas, how to reach out? Because you know, people are usually good in one area. How do you even like, come up with an idea that maybe is not a part of your area? What do you do to do that? Well, I mean, if you feel you're one-dimensional, then you have to go out and seek out other people that are not, right? But I mean, I think everybody actually has different skill sets that they just kind of take for granted, right? Somebody might be a, you know, a violinist, right? And they don't really think about how to combine that world. But I think everybody has that in them. But if not, then put yourself into odd situations. You want, if you've always been curious about biology and you're a programmer, show up to a biology conference, right? If you're really interested about insects and what kind of weird stuff's going on with insects, show up there and start learning. Maybe there's some kind of new research that could be done together, right? So I think just putting yourself into situations, like you'll never really learn new things if you're always comfortable. You have to make yourself a little bit exposed. You have to be a little nervous. You have to kind of freak out. You have to be that person that sits in the corner of the room. You have to like jump in the room and start talking to random people. So if you feel like you're one dimensional, then yeah, I would recommend just going and talk to new people that you would never ever talk to. You'd be amazed what you might learn. Should they take like a really big leap and then just jump out there and go to a conference they know nothing about? Or should they take like smaller steps in development? I mean, Everyone has a different path, right? For me, I will take a big leap, right? If somebody's never done it before, then yeah, take a small step. Maybe just show up there and kind of be a lurker at the conference. Don't have to necessarily go out there and boast. But, like, but I think the bigger step you take, the better returns you'll get, right? So, um, yeah, I, I, I say take as big as you feel comfortable with and maybe just a little bit beyond that, right? And then, you, then you'll be in a good space, I think. One thing that I think everybody wants to know here, and you've probably been interviewed about this a billion times, but the Olympics, yes. right? So you would just like woke up one day and I want to be in the Olympics. And uh, you actually went out there and got a Colombian passport. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you do that. Just walk into the door, I guess, and knock and ask for one. But what are your main learning points from that? Are you going to do it again? Uh, what, because it, you came short. Like, what, what is your next step with that, with that dream? I've always believed that anything is possible, right? And... Um, I always pursued, you know, kind of ridiculous stuff, but mostly in my tech world, right? But here, like, I truly believe that every human can do anything, right? I mean, I'm a, you know, I already probably gained a lot of weight back, but like, even before, it's like, I was a pretty fat, out of shape computer guy, right? And I was able to get within, you know, you know, minutes. Like, I was like, super close to actually qualifying the Olympics in less than a year, right? So, like, the fact that if I could do something like that in, like, nine months, I think, yeah, if you dedicate a year or two of it, it's possible, right? Um, another thing I actually realized that when you put your dream out there, and especially the bigger it is, people want to help. Like this year, like you can't imagine like how many people helped, right? Like the country of Finland, I feel like I was adopted here while I was training, right? Um, let's say Colombia, right? I mean like 
you know what? Why did the country decide to give me citizenship? They obviously believed in my dream. Like people always ask me, like, what does it feel like to represent a country you don't even know? I'm like, I'm super proud. Like they really truly believed that I could potentially pull this off, right? So I'd say it was like the two big learnings. And um, what was the other question you had? Was Are you going to do it again? I might do it again. So I don't know yet, right? I'm still trying to consistently run and stuff like that. Um, but I did do one really cool thing I found out recently is I qualified for next year's world championships. So I'll be skiing next year at the 2015 World Championships in Falun. So that's a pretty huge accomplishment. That's the second most important event in the skiing world. Um, but yeah, next Olympics, I'll be 41 years old. I don't know. We'll see how my body holds up. But uh, let's just take one step at a time and see how I do next year. Yeah, so. What about your next dreams? You know, what's the next thing for you? Yeah, I mean, so I mentioned one. I want to own a, a soccer football team. I got to figure out how to do that, right? That might be a few years out. I have to earn a Anybody little bit more money. Anybody can help here? Exactly. Put them right? on a team? Um, I mean, I think that's one of the big ones, right? And there's a few other trips that I want to do, right? I mean, like, I'd love to be able to go and sail around the world before I die, right? I mean, but these are things that people have been done before. Like, but I, there's, things keep on adding up, right? The problem also is as you accomplish goals, let's say you go to a new country, right? Once you're in that country, then you want to see other countries. It's, like, it's never ending. The more you do, the more you want to kind of check out and stuff like that. So I don't think it's ever going to stop. And I, I don't know yeah, when I'll ever run out of juice and stuff like that. Hey, man, really cool. Really cool. Always glad to talk to you. Always glad to be, you know, listening to your stories. And I think we at Arctic Startup, all of us learned a lot from you. And I think that's part of, part of the inspiration for this event. You've helped us a lot to pull, put this together. You know, we're doing some crazy stuff with you about the event that nobody should know about. But, you know, basically, you're a big part of this. And thank you so much for helping us out. And I think now we can open the questions to the audience, maybe, uh, see if they can come up some questions that can... Uh, be intriguing. Yeah, guys, I mean, feel free to ask me anything. I mean, besides all this stuff, I've invested in, I think, now 106 companies across four continents. So, like, feel free to ask anything, right? Seriously. Money. Yeah, money, <laughs> it is things, whatever. Yeah, please. All right, anybody? I'd like to know what's your biggest mistake that you've done that you would do again? Biggest mistake? Let me think. Besides my love life, I would say... Um, no, like in, in my second company, um, I kind of started it way too anxiously and I had a really bad co-founder. I mean, we've patched things up since then, but like it set back my company, you know, by I'd say years. And actually that's probably one of the reasons why the company died. It just got off on a really long foot. So I think that's probably my biggest mistake in terms of the business world. Um, in general though, like um, other mistakes I do is like sometimes... I just like, I'm kind of a little bit almost gullible sometimes. Like I kind of want to believe people almost too much. I should become a little bit more jaded. I'm not sure if it's a positive or negative, but sometimes, yeah, I kind of want to believe too much and it kind of bites me in the ass sometimes. So uh, about Petro, it looks like it's, it's something that is, we could use now. So were you just so many years uh, too early with that? Yeah, so he's asking a question about that second company that failed. It was called, called Metro, right? And so, yeah, I mean, Metro basically was like what Tinder is now in 2004, 2007, right? Yeah, I mean, it was too early, but you know what? Um, maybe if we had timed a little better or raised more money, we would have made it to the first launch of iPhone, right? So, yeah, like we missed the iPhone launch by, I think, like six months. So that was one problem. Two, yeah, it was too early. We were like, like I said, we were kind of way too much dreaming and we were kind of off in space and stuff like that. But, um... Yeah, I think it was mostly a timing thing, but I think if I didn't have the bad co-founder, we might have pursued it, and the company kind of wouldn't have been as drained by the time we kind of you know, ran out of steam and stuff like that. But, uh, but I mean, out of that company actually came a really good result too, right? Like, I found a really great team. We took all those people, and then we started the third company, LaFour, and it ended up pretty well. So, yeah, I mean, there's always silver lining. Another thing is, like, with that company, even though I went there and pitched a lot of investors, I got no's from everybody, but now all those investors are my friends, and I co-invest with those guys, so maybe it was meant to be that it would fail. I don't know, like, but maybe that's also the loser's attitude, just making excuses on that, so yeah. Hi, Villa here. Uh, I actually have a question um, regarding your journey to Sochi 2014. So I was, I was following your, um, your training and, and the competitions online, so I think actually we should give a big hand to Paul for all his efforts. Woo! So what would be your kind of big learnings, uh, biggest learnings from that, that journey? Um, well, I mean, besides like believing that anything's possible, I mean, one thing I learned, okay, so everybody here, like we tend to be more techie, we kind of disrespect a lot of 
other worlds and say, you know, entrepreneurs are hardcore. We're the only ones that really try hard, right? Actually, I was sitting there working with these guys and girls, training with them every single day. I mean, these athletes or let's say professional musicians, they're just as entrepreneurial as we are, right? I mean, like when you see musicians who's made it, it's just like a company who exited. Or you see an athlete who's at the biggest stage. It's just like a company who went IPO. Like, these people work just as hard as we do. They dream just as big. And they also have a whole team around them as well, right? So I have a lot more respect for all other types of kind of creative type of, uh, or, you know, kind of hardworking industries, right? So, like, yeah, athletes, musicians, you know, people in the kind of creative industries, like, they work just as hard as entrepreneurs, right? So, you know, like, when you see somebody and you're like, oh, look at that guy's like a dumb athlete or whatever. No, he's a genius in different ways. He's a physical genius. And the amount of effort he's putting is just the same as that. So, like, don't judge people so easily, I would say. So that's probably one of my big learnings, I'd say, besides the one I said earlier. Do you need a new coach for next year? Do I need a new coach? Um, no, I love my coach. Too bad. Uh, he's pretty amazing. Um, but I'm always looking for to expand my team to kind of help push me, right? In general, the more people that actually had, I had around me, I felt like more pressure, and that made me actually train harder and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we can talk about ways to join Team Paul or whatever. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. There's one, guys. there's one thing I want to do. You said, you know, to do crazy things, to go out of the thing. I want to do a stage selfie. I've never done that. Right? Okay, sure, so we're going to do, do a stage selfie, and you guys have to, like, do crazy stuff in the background. Paul, come here. Yeah, guys, you have to do something crazy in the background there. Come on. No one's doing anything. Come on, people. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. We couldn't see you anyway. So. Yeah, you, you were there somewhere. It's all dark. Thank you guys so much. Paul, will you stick around for some one-on-one uh, -on -one Q and A's in the back? Yes, I'll be around. Yes. Yes. yes so Paul cool. is gonna be available for some one-on-one -on -one Q and A's. So feel free to approach him. He's a very approachable guy. He has loads of money, so you know. Thanks, guys. I think you okay. can, are you looking for a wife as well? What did you say? Are you looking for a wife? I'm always looking for beautiful he ladies. He is looking yeah. for beautiful women and a wife. So, you know, get out of here. Thank Try you, guys. Set me up here, Thank you, guys.